July of, of last year, when information about the Russian hack of the Democratic National Committee first surfaced. And one um, interesting point that you see as you go back over that record is that you and Senator Feinstein at that time were quite outspoken uh, in uh, warning about this. And uh, a number of us have, have written that through the summer um, and early fall, but certainly in August, September, you in, in um, closed conversations were raising concerns uh, with uh, officials uh, about the need to react uh, more strongly. We now know that uh, uh, CIA uh, Director John Brennan was in, in touch with his Russian counterpart expressing concern, but somehow that message wasn't conveyed in a way that changed uh, Russian actions. And, and I want to ask you what, what the lesson is for that. You were usefully self-critical about the Democratic Party and the, and the administration, but, but more broadly, what, what's the lesson to take away about how to send the message so it's credible? I, I would make a, a couple points. The first is uh, I go back even before the Russia hack um, to the North Korean hack. Uh, now, I took a personal interest in this because they were hacking the entertainment industry, and that's my district. Um, but All politics is local. <laughs> that's true. Um, but the point that I was making at that time was we needed to establish a deterrent. Uh, if the North Koreans concluded, concluded that this was essentially a free crime, we would see them do it again. And not only them, we would see others do it again. Uh, and I don't think we adequately addressed the North Korean hack. Um, I remember at the time there was a debate about whether uh, the lights were going out in Pyongyang, whether that was our response. Now, if people have to wonder whether you've responded, uh, it's probably not going to be much of a deterrent. And the problem in North Korea is the lights are going out all the time. Um, <laughs> and, and this also shows that a cyber response to a cyber attack is not always the right response. Uh, we have obviously far greater capability to respond than North Korea does, uh, but we are far more vulnerable uh, because their infrastructure is rudimentary, ours is completely wired, uh, and they can do us a lot of damage. What I was urging then was that we respond in a way that really gets North Korea's attention. Uh, when the South Koreans want to respond to North Korea, they do it with information. They do it with loudspeakers. They do it by telling people in the North what a terrible regime they live under that's starving their own people. Uh, and my thought was we ought to respond along those lines uh, so that Kim Jong-un has to think before he engages in another cyber attack, do I really want to invite more information wars coming into the North? Um, but I also think the Russians were watching uh, and decided that, well, we didn't respond to that. Uh, they could get away with a cyber attack. The nice thing about cyber attacks from an offensive point of view is you only have to find one vulnerability as opposed to defending against the million, so it's asymmetrically very beneficial. But you will also always have deniability uh, because the victim, well, the United States in this case of a cyber attack, is never going to want to fully reveal how they know you were the source. Uh, so there's always going to be some level of deniability. Indeed, you have Putin denying it to this day. Um, so you need a strong deterrent. We didn't have one. Uh, when Senator Feinstein and I issued that statement, and we did something very unusual, we not only issued a statement before the administration was willing to, but we issued a statement that we said was on the basis of briefings we were getting in closed session. We don't do that. Uh, we had to vet that with the intelligence agencies before we could. Um, but what, what I also urged at the time was that once they did make attribution, which followed in October, they should go beyond that and impose another round of sanctions on Russia. Uh, as a way of deterring the Russians, because I was frankly worried that we hadn't seen not only the end of Russian hacking, but that they would escalate. I was most concerned not with our voting machines. I was most concerned that they would start dumping forgeries among real documents, and it would be impossible to separate the two. Um, now, the, the other point I wanted to make, though, beyond deterrence is um, deterrence uh, alone is never going to be enough. Uh, and cyber hygiene is definitely not going to be enough. Uh, if the Russians want to get into your computer or the Washington Post or mine, they will. 
uh, they're capable enough, uh, and no matter how well you educate your workforce, um, they will keep trying, whether it's spear phishing attacks or others, until they succeed.